Hey Legend, on Friday I drove down to Snapper Rocks on the Gold Coast to check out the WSL Challenger Series comp that was in progress at the famous Superbank. I went more as a guest spectator, but as a photographer, it's almost impossible not to pack the camera and take a few images myself. It's been years since I've photographed a surf comp. It's something I used to do in the early 2000s, particularly for some longboard, uh, Australian longboard magazines. But it's not what I would call my favorite type of surf photography. So I wasn't taking this too seriously. But at the same time, I thought it could be a chance to take you guys through my thought process, the gear that I chose and the settings and the angles and the compositions uh, that I ran with on this particular day. It'll hopefully give you some ideas about shooting a surf comp yourself one day, particularly when you haven't got the access as the commissioned photographer. If I was doing this for an, a client, it would have been, I would have attacked it a very different way, but we'll get into that in the breakdown of some of the images of the day. Before we get to the images, I'll quickly go into the gear that I chose for the day. I deliberately limited myself to one lens and one camera body, and that setup was the Canon R5 with the 300mm 2.8 lens. There were two reasons for this lens choice. I have only just got the lens, so I wanted to give it a good test without the two times converter. Personally, I normally am a fan of slightly pulled back look than the super tight action, but in a complete package, I recommend to give a collection of both tight and pullback images. When using the 300mm, you are forced to be more creative than if you are shooting uh, past 600mm. So you will notice people that are shooting 600mm will generally plant themselves in the one position for most of the day and rely on the lens to do the work. When using a shorter lens, you will be more inclined to move around and find interesting foregrounds, backgrounds, and definitely changing up the heights and the angles. So my advice is if you are finding yourself, planting yourself in the one spot when using uh, super telephoto lenses, then maybe shoot a session on a shorter lens and see if it forces you to think differently. And this will hopefully get you moving around even when you uh, go back to your big 600 mil lens. Anyway, that's the setup I chose for this particular day and I may touch more on that as I go through these images. So let's go into the selection of the images on the computer now. Okay, so the first heat of the day was Sally Fitzgibbons and she's always amazing with the flans. So, you know, just getting these little moments where like one minute before she's actually paddling out for a heat, she's, you know, giving so much time back and that's why she's so marketable and, and so popular, I think. Anyway, so I was pretty keen to photograph Sal. Um, the first heat I decided to be sort of like back behind the action, shooting back with the, the east sun that was rising to over my right hand shoulder, I would say. And also it was going to bring in the background. So I always like just not, if I can incorporate a background of some sort, uh, that compresses from a long way away. So in this case, these buildings are compressing. It just makes it a little bit more interesting than shooting out to just a regular sky, I guess. But yeah, I'm, I'm liking the light in this. I'm liking the background and I'm liking the pull back. I like the negative space. It's got a lot of area up there, which sort of lets the picture breathe. And it's not super tight action, but uh, you know, magazine editors love this because they can put titles in here and put uh, script and font and uh, fill the page with that so graphically uh, you know it can work for editorial an image like this so just going through a few more of Sally's that one's a good one because her sponsor lines up with the boy in the background fortuitous shot there and that goes through the full sequence as she goes down the line once again some nice morning light morning lights just morning and afternoon light is where I I like to be most of the time. For this one, I was at uh, 1,000 per second f4, and my ISO was 320 post heat. And there she goes; she's still frothing. She did win, so it's a bit easier to take photos and sign autographs after you've won. Yeah, it's cool to get those little after shots. Once again, I wasn't the event photographer, and if I was, I would definitely be getting getting in there with my wider lens and using flash and doing those sort of things. I started the first heat sort of on the beach. 
down sort of lowish and behind the surfer. And then for the next heat, I went up high and further back and then incorporated foreground. So yeah, I really like this shot because it frames up the surfer really nicely. Uh, if you, you just took this picture without the foreground inches, without the tree up the top and all the contest tents, well then it would be pretty boring and lackluster and like they would have been too far away. It didn't matter that they were a long way away because this sort of draws you into the frame. Just makes it once again, a bit, bit more interesting shot than just standing on the beach. This is the first heat of the men's round that came out. They started out behind the rock and that's where I really wanted to. So at Snapper, Snapper Rocks, they can take off behind, behind the rock and there's a really steep section there. And when it's big, that's the place to be. But they were surfing down towards Little Marley, which is sort of down, down the beach a little bit. And when they take off there, still a great wave, but their surfers tend to surf out and away from you. Whereas at the rock, they're coming straight into you. So when I saw the surfers paddling out here, I quickly got up to the rock with my 300mm lens and got this picture. But as soon as this guy got this wave, they both moved down to little Marley, so I was then out of position behind it. So I had to readjust again, but I'm glad this is probably my, the tightest action shot I've got, a, I've got of the day. And then later on in the day, yeah, just keep changing up the angles. You'll see, you know, that I'm like moving up and down the beach. I'm moving low, I'm moving high, I'm moving behind them, I'm moving in front of them. I'm using, in this, in this instance, I'm using a foreground to just to give a sense of the vibe. So just the surfer surfing by themselves doesn't tell the whole story, but in this picture, you've seen the, the uh, interested parties looking on. This guy could well be his board caddy that's got the board. They're out of focus in the foreground, which sort of draws your eye to the focused part of the picture, but then also tells the story. It's got the horizon line of all those buildings from Surfer's Paradise and the Gold Coast. Got the drone, the WSL drone flying up in the air. Um, so it's telling a story all in the one shot and having the pullback nature of that. So I'm like a fair way from the action. I can get a lot closer and get a lot, you know, tighter impact shot, even with my 300 mil, but I chose to go back and sort of tell the whole story there. And then the police rocked up in Giles' heat and uh, obviously they were just waiting for Bodie to come in. There's Joel coming in. He hasn't heard the score yet, but uh, so he's nice and happy. But then the score came in and uh, yeah, he got bailed out of the heat. So the world, the current world number one on the WSL got ousted in the round of 16, I'm pretty sure. There's all the lenses and you'll notice if you looked up and down the beach, a lot of them were at just human height, the human eye level height. And that's what I saw of lots during the day. All these lenses were around the eye level of the human and they never changed all day. This guy's slightly lower, so that's good. But yeah, and this guy's, you know, sitting down on the job, but like he's probably working all day long. But this is why uh, surf photography can look a little bit common and boring, and it'll get boring for you as well if you keep taking at human eye level height. And let's say it's not the best level to take surfing at, but if you change it up, you'll get a different look. So I go on a lot about that in my courses, finding different ways to separate yourself from what everyone else is taking and what everyone else is taking is from standing level height. And I saw a lot of that again at the Gold Coast. So sometimes I would get lower to get a lower perspective, makes the wave looks bigger. Uh, once again, trying to sh find things to shoot through to frame them. Uh, and that's, this compensates for having a short lens. So if you've only got a 300 or 400 mil lens and the action's a long way away, you can utilize foreground and background to get even more interesting picture than a pulled in shot. So here, just exposing for the surfer. So I'm shooting in manual the whole time. And you know, I've dropped my shutter speed and increased my ISO from what I was shooting out the back from the surf action, just so I could focus squarely on the, the skin tone and blow out the background and just give a neutral background. So you really just focus in on the surfer. Happy Rodriguez after a heat win. Once again, some foreground, background action. There's Stephanie Gilmore and her competitor, I think Nixie Ryan, pretending to wish, wish each other luck before the heat. Happy Steph Gilmore coming in after beating said Nixie Ryan. And then once it's all finished, these guys bring in the boys. 
and at Snapper Rocks, it's a free-for-all. So everyone gets out there, including the pros and the Gold Coast locals, and they try and get their hour before the sun goes down. And that's when the light gets good. So the comp's finished now, and the light goes golden. I had a big break between, uh, I think, photographing this heat back here, and then the golden light. I just went surfing myself. Uh, sort of light got a bit flat, and I could see waves down at Greenmount, so I just went surfing and then came in just in time to just get the golden light. Once again, probably should have swam out with a camera, but I just surfed for a few hours, so I'd had enough salt water. When the sun sinks, I then, uh, what I do a lot is instead of just increasing the ISO so I can get a shutter speed of 1000, I go the other way and I, I put the ISO back down to 100 and then slow the shutter speed down to 1 20th a second and then pan with the surfers. So, you can get a sort of speed blur look because once the sun goes down, that sort of high, that high shutter speed sharp look just doesn't look as good and as uh, slowed down. So that's my technique. So a little bit of a wrap up of some of the pictures and my reasoning behind the way I took the pictures on the day. Hopefully it helps, might raise some questions. I do go way more into uh, techniques of shooting for the land inside my confident photographer course. I actually got a comprehensive video. It's probably a 20, 25 minute video where I take you down to the points of Noosa and take you through an entire shoot and how I do that from the land. That will be coming out in the confidence photographer course in the next week or two. So if you're a member of that, you will get that. So stay tuned for that. And if you would like to know more about the, either the confidence photographer course or the water photographer course, well, there'll be links below this video, but please just direct message me or send me an email for more information. And hopefully uh, you got something out of this video and yeah, please subscribe and leave any questions if you've got one.